What's up guys, this is Powell. Um, today we're gonna be going over the upper extremity bones, particularly the clavicle, the humerus, and the scapula. Um, I'll do my best and get through as quick as, as quickly as I can. It'll be a very, a very terse review of all the prominent landmarks of the bones. So we'll get started with the clavicle. This is the clavicle. Um, the way that I can tell uh, which direction to orient the clavicle is, and there, there, there are two ends. This is the um, lateral acromial end, it's the flatter end, and you have the other end, the other end is more rounded and fatter. This is the medial sternal end. Um, so the way it's oriented would be just like this um, on my body. This would be a left clavicle. Um, so like I said, this right here is the medial sternal end, it attaches to the sternum. This right here is the lateral acromial end, this attaches to the acromial clavicular joint. Um, right here, you have something called the coronary tubercle that is always going to be that is always going to be pointing posteriorly on the body. So you're standing like this. Uh, the coronary tubercle is going to be posting is going to be positioned posteriorly. This right here is the shaft of the clavicle. Um, you could tell because the first uh, one third of it is going to be concave, um, and then the two thirds of it is going to be convex. So. Um, so concave anteriorly, that's the first one third, and the other two thirds is going to be convex. All right, so let's turn it over. Once we turn it over, let me, I don't wanna confuse you. Uh, let's turn it over like this. So th again, this is the posterior, this is medial, lateral, posterior, anterior, we're just gonna flip it over. Um, right here, you're gonna find that there's a trapezoid line. The trapezoid line is again on the lateral end. It's just a rough patch of edges that the trapezius attaches onto and on the medial sternal end you have your costal impression also known as your costal tubercle and what's connecting the trapezoid line and the um, costal tubercle is going to be the subclavian groove for a muscle attachment. So that's it with the clavicle. Um, it's pretty simple to find the trapezoid line, subclavian groove and the costal tubercle you gotta flip the clavicle over onto its uh, inferior side. Alright, so next we got the humerus. Um, the way I like to orient myself with the humerus is, if you look at it, it's a little bit um, concave on this end. And so that's the end that's going to be pointing out anteriorly. So I think of it as like a shovel. So you'll be shoveling your arm, shoveling your, your forearm up. So this right here is going to be a humerus on the left side of the, of the body. Yeah. This is the left side, sitting right, right like this. Alright, so the first thing you're going to notice is this right here is the head. There are two necks to the humerus. The first neck is right over here, right around here. This is what we call the anatomical neck. Right over here is the anatomical neck. And then over here you have the surgical neck, which is the, the actual neck of the humerus. Um, our professor always joked that said that the humerus is funny. It's humerus because there are two necks. If you see somebody with two necks, they're going to be pretty, pretty humerus. Um, so that's how you tell. So you got your surgical neck, um, your surgical neck right here, and a tonical neck right there. You got the greater trochanter. Um, excuse me, the greater tuberosity. The greater tuberosity wraps around posteriorly. That's how you can tell. And you got your lesser tuberosity right over here. The lesser tuberosity is always more medial. Um, than the greater tuberosity, which is more lateral. In between the greater tuberosity and the lesser tuberosity, you've got something called the bicipital groove right over here. This is also known as the uh, intertubercular groove or the intertubercular sulcus. And within the greater tubercle, uh, greater tuberosity, you have the crest of the greater tuberosity, which runs straight down. It's a line straight down. And within the lesser tuberosity, you have the same thing. You have the crest of the lesser tuberosity, which is the line that runs straight down. And where these two lines run, they meet at, at this elevated ridge right here. This right here is called the deltoid tuberosity, um, which is right in the middle of the shaft of the humerus. And the deltoid tuberosity is where the deltoids insert onto. Um, and then within the shaft, you have two ridges. This right here is your medial supracondylar ridge. And on the other end, you have your lateral supracondylar ridge. And then within, um, after the ridges, you got your medial epicondyle right here. You got your lateral epicondyle right here. And you have two fossas. Um, the first fossa is anterior. This one is called your coronoid fossa. And on the back end, you have your olecranon fossa. 
Um, a little bit further down, right over here, this is your trochlea, and you have your capitulum on this end. I think that's it with the humerus. Uh, it's funny because it's got two necks. We're gonna go on to the last one. This right here is just scapula. Um, the way I, I like to orient myself with the scapula is this right here is the where the shoulder is. That's where the uh, the shoulder joint is, and so this is going to be on the right side. Um, this right here is your cor coracoid. This is your chromium. So this is going to be a right scapula. So sitting right back here. Right. Okay. Um, so again, this is your chromium process. This is your coracoid. I remember it because A is higher than C on the alphabet. So A comes before C, so chromium, coracoid. All right, again, this is the, glen this is the glenoid cavity um, where the humerus head sits in. Within the glenoid cavity, you have the one, uh, this labrum area that's right around, that surrounds the cavity. Um, the glenoid cavity is also called the fossa as well. You have the neck of the scapula, which is going to be right over here. Neck of the scapula. Um, you have two notches. The first notch is going to be your scapular notch. This one right here is pretty easy to tell. Scapular notch is uh, more anteriorly, and it's where the suprascapular nerve runs through. And then uh, right over here, you can kind of see it's hidden away right over here. This is called your acromion glenoidal notch. Um, if you can't tell, it's the words explain it. It's the acromion glenoidal in between the acromion and the glenoid. There's a small notch right over there. That's where the supraspinatus muscle runs through. You have two tubercles. The first tubercle, this is the infraglenoid tubercle, right over here, and higher up. This is the infraglenoid tubercle, and higher up, right over here, you have your supraglenoid tubercle. The supraglenoid tubercle is uh, on the base of a. Mm, yeah, on the base of the coracoid process. This is the coracoid process. Um, super glenoid tubercle right up here. A couple of other housekeeping things with the scapula. You have three borders. You have your superior border, which is the, this border right here. You have your lateral border. And then you have your medial border. And you also have some angles, right? So you got your superior angle right up here. You have your inferior angle and you have your lateral angle, which is an actual angle, it's sort of made up, but it will be right around here. You have three fossas. You have your supraspinatus fossa. So let's start with the one on the anterior. You have your subscapular fossa. On the anterior side, on the posterior side, you have your supraspin infraspinatus fossa down here. And then higher up, you have your supraspinatus fossa um, up there. So that is it with the scapula. Um, I'm gonna post some other videos on the other um, bones in the body, so make sure to check the comment section, uh, check the descriptions for the other links to the videos. Thanks.